Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Sailing Uma. <laughs> Honestly, I never know how to start these things, so I'm just gonna go straight to it. A couple days ago, we received a message from our friend Deborah from The Impossible Dream. If you don't know The Impossible Dream, it is this super cool catamaran that was designed and built to be wheelchair accessible. We met up with them a few times over the years, once in Mexico and then again in New York for CLGP. I'll leave the link to those videos uh, in the card here or in the description below as well. If you guys are interested, I would definitely recommend to check them out. Anyways, Deborah messaged us saying that the boatyard where the Impossible Dream was built is here in Plymouth. And they are also currently building another sailboat, another catamaran for another guy named Tom, who is also in a wheelchair. Long story short, introductions were made and we were invited today to go visit the boatyard and just chat and meet up with them. And it's also another sunny day. Yes, and there's absolutely no wind. So instead of taking the bus and the ferry, then try to figure out a way to get to the boatyard, we're just gonna take the dinghy. It thinks it's 2,400 meters away from where we took off from. So it's like it needs to return home, you're at 30% battery. Because <laughs> we're like two kilometers from where we started. Nice! <laughs> That's how we do. And away we go. Let's do it. Let's get in front of him. time before the tide goes out we'll be stuck here for the night. <laughs> yeah just come like around and then in behind that catamaran. I think we'll be good. So how old is um, Multi Hall? Like how long have you been building boats for? Um, Dascat, which was the original sort of design company, is 31 years old now. Um, Multi Marine is coming up to its 21st birthday next year. Um, and where we are, the Multi Hall Centre is 50 years old. Basically, it's a specialist multi-hull boat yard. Um, so it, it does basically berthing, storage, servicing. And there's a you know a whole bunch of different types of boats, as you saw the other day as we walked around, from very old, early production uh, English catamarans to the sort of later production French catamarans, and quite a few one-offs and unique vessels, shall we say, as well as, as, well as our Dascats, of course. Everything produced here on site? Uh, as much as possible. Um, we build the 
We do the design here, we do the structuring here, we do the tooling here, we build the boats here. Um, we've even started building masts here, and we also do our own upholstery, electric systems. So yes, pretty much everything we like to bring in and sort of focus it. I'm not an experienced sailor, I don't know much that, about it in any kind of detail. I've never done any long voyages. Um, and that's because you can't buy wheelchair accessible boats, they don't exist. So in order to be able to, to learn more about it, you actually have to build it first. I was researching how on earth some of these wheelchairs are going to go and get a boat, because um, nobody makes them, uh, unless you get them made specifically for it. So a bit of research, I found that they did Possible Dreams, called them up and said, what do you reckon? Spoke to Daz and then now here we are. <laughs> it's right at the very beginning, we you know, brainstormed the um, you know, what it is we wanted to achieve out of it and then started coming up with some designs. It's been a very iterative process so you know even today we were just jumping in and out of things and you know working out and drawing lines on pieces of uh, piece of MDF um, to work it all out and it's great because we kind of approached it from a actually yeah we can do anything so let's just work it out as we go and and you know that's what we're doing and it seems to be going all right so far. wheel back so there's also going to be a plug-in seat um, but you know the less transferring you need to do the faster you're going to be able to move to the dock mm -hmm. pass a line if you're on, yeah. your, on your own um, yeah. so that all works really really well um, basically to get to the foredeck uh, Tom can transfer onto a small lift that will go up through the centre hatch here and then he can go and Lay on the net and enjoy life. And That's the whole the point of a catamaran is to have the trampolines, right? Yeah. It's like the best part. <laughs> Hit autopilot, go out there and watch the dolphins go by. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's but it's just... really cool. It's like those finer details that make a big difference, right? Like just, you know, personally being there and say, okay, the helm needs to be a foot to the left so that you yeah. can be comfortable helming and seeing where you actually need the winch for yourself. Yeah. So we were looking at this earlier, so you can see there's a little arrow saying, okay. The bottom because it's okay for the leg height, and then we were just looking at the top and working out where my eye line is and you know where we should have the top of the um, of the control panel. So yeah, exactly what, as you say, gives us, we've got a lot of flexibility. This is my cabin. So I have a big bed here, uh, lots of space to get around, and, uh, and we're sat, as you can see, just above the engine, which is all going in at the moment. Um, and that's it, really. Nice big space. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ocean. one of the, the, the design ideas we had was to basically uh, deck over the entire hull right out to the outboard side to maximise the footprint for accessibility. And the great thing about this boat is going to be when you wake up in the morning is you can look straight out yeah. over the back of the boat and go, oh, the front of the boat. beautiful out the side or out the front. And we put this in, uh, in the front face so that it can have some sliding windows in it. So again, we can get a lot of air coming through because you're going to be on anchor quite a lot when you're doing that expeditioning. Um, yeah. So what we don't want it to be is a complete sweat box in here. So uh, plenty of ventilation is the key to the biggest problem with accessibility in the boating industry is the majority of boats you cannot get on. Um, so uh, this is obviously a problem and this is why it's driving basically you know, what we're doing and, and looking at the, the challenges and, and finding the solutions really. I mean, it's down to, down to the client to start with at the end of the day. Um, we can come up with some ideas and some solutions to the problems and, 
You know, I'm a great believer in simplification and making life easy and not too complicated because the more complicated systems you have on a boat, the more things you have to go wrong, basically. Mm -hmm. And then that means you end up sitting in a port trying to fix the problems rather than being out enjoying the boat. Yeah. So. It's going to be really interesting and get you out there on the water, that's the main thing. And uh, get exploring and surveying the sea, isn't it? Yeah, um, under the, the sea. Seabeds and... I do quite a lot of diving as well, so uh, um, so this is a diving platform as well as the same. So yeah, we'll have a kind of little, you know, some sort of way of getting it out of the water um, at the back. We'll have the ability to charge cylinders, um, we'll have a really cool sonar system so we can go wreck hunting and uh, just get out and do all of that. The kind of World War II landing craft <laughs> style thing with the flip down front. So I've got an off-road uh, one of these which will just drive straight up onto the beach and well, hopefully straight back on again afterwards. Um, and then, yeah, it just gets lifted out of the water and we're back on, uh, yeah. on the back of the boat. I'll be out there uh, early summer and, yep, testing it, tweaking but it up, making talking. it work, and it's just untie and go, isn't yeah. it? That's the key to it. That's the key. I think uh, you're very fortunate in many ways because going through all the detailed mm -hmm. build process is giving you a much deeper background understanding of your boat and yeah, yeah. what it's going to have to deal with than yeah. most sailors ever get actually so I, that's a really good what ideal cruising plans do you have with this boat like where do you want to go um i would really like to go from the uk down to cape verde um, get across the atlantic that way at that latitude and then drop down probably miss out the Caribbean to start with, then drop down the east coast of South America. We do the Falklands, maybe go through the Magellan Strait, west coast Chile, break out to the Pacific. I mean, all this depends on the weather and all that kind of thing, but you, know, you spend a bit of time there doing the di diving and the exploring and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so the tide went down since we got here. I'm hoping <laughs> that we have enough water to actually leave. <laughs> uh, we might be able to do it. The, sw the swans are swimming. If the swans are swimming, then we can go out. Yeah, I think I think we'll be all right. You can use the oars to just. No, it's it's literally sitting in the mud. This has to get over that chunk of chain. Yeah. <laughs> it's over the chain, so I think I'll be able to do it from here now. Phew. There we go. Okay, stop. This is risky business, man. I don't think we should motor though. We no, should we're gonna we're gonna or it. Oars. The only problem is normally when it's the shallow, like in the Bahamas, you can see where the shallow bits are. But here the water's kind of muddy and everything's the same sort of brown color. So until you're in about that much water, you can't actually see the bottom anyway. So it's kind of just uh, guess and check and hopefully we don't ground. We're more than, we're probably two thirds of the way out though. So we're doing all right. It's pretty though. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. You oh. broke the steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those really fancy pop on, pop on. You take it away with you if you go up to the restaurant or whatever. Yeah. It's like an F1 race car, just exactly. pop it off when you get in. It's a security thing. Yeah. <laughs>